Welcome back to my bathroom. Today we're getting crafty and putting our tape and hair extensions on ourselves by ourselves. Right? So before we start gluing, make sure you subscribe and like. I'm here for you every single week on Sundays. Now to clarify before we begin my makeover, although I am a professional, I'm in my bathroom. Basically what I'm saying is this is not the gospel and I'm just gonna show you the quickest, easiest way to do this on yourself, by yourself. Skip a few steps. The extensions we're gonna be using today are 22 inches long. Ladies, the company is called Full Shine. It's from Amazon. They match good enough, and I guarantee you from far away, they look amazing. <laughs> Before we even start, you wanna make sure that you have prepped your hair for extensions, meaning that your color is as close to the extensions or whatever color you're happy with. It's a lot easier to color your hair without extensions in. And you have clarified your hair that morning. This is what I usually use, generic Paul Mitchell One shampoo from Sally's. I'll link this below, it's just a clarifying shampoo. I personally don't use any conditioner afterwards, so it does leave your hair a little dry, a little hay-like, but I don't want any oils or silicones or anything in my hair to mess this up. After we've prepped our hair, we have to decide how we're going to be styling our hair majority of the time. Is it going to be on the side? Is it going to be straight down the middle? How do you wanna look for the next 30 days, basically? I'm not really sure, actually, so I'm just gonna do a middle part because I'm not sure. I already did this step, but I went through and quickly ran the flat iron through my hair to make sure to stick straight. That's gonna help us navigate and be able to see better when we're placing these. Now, I'm going to do four quads. So I'm just going to part this straight down the middle in the back and at the highest point of my head i'm gonna take it it'll land right behind your ear put a clip in it and i'm going to mimic that on the other side and that's going to be our basic four quadrants if you do a side part or a middle part the parting in the back should be straight down the middle so you're not caulking it to the side just because you have a side part we're about to bob ross it so here's me Here's our parting that we just did, that four quad, this black line. This is where we're starting. I'm going to make my first subsection. It's going to be diagonal, like this. This is where we're gonna place our first hair extension. You wanna make sure you leave your hairline out. So you're obviously not gonna put an extension on the bang. You're not gonna put one right here because you have to be mindful of when you wear your hair up, which I wouldn't recommend doing a lot because it tugs at the hair, but for some like half up cute braids hairstyles, you are going to want to wear your hair up. If you have an extension that is right here and you put your hair up, you can see that. We're trying to hide these. So you want to have a band of hair that's going to be able to cover that extension. Does that make sense? How thick or thin this subsection is, is really dependent on how much hair you have. I myself have fine thin hair, not a lot. So this is a thicker subsection. So what this looks like on our little head, a diagonal subsection right here, not horizontal, no. How this is going to work is we're going to take a very, very thin section or subsection of hair and we're gonna sandwich our hair extensions in between. There's going to be a hair extension, our bread, meat, which is our real hair, bread again, which is a hair extension, hair extension. So you're making a sandwich. I myself like bologna. <laughs> We're gonna plug up our flat iron or smoothing iron, take off the little sticky pad. This side is sticky, this side is not. And I just kind of tape them on the side of the mirror here. Take a very thin subsection. It's also diagonal. We're gonna lift this up. This goes in diagonal and we're gonna fold this over. The hair is going to grab onto the sticky side. Now you wanna take a look and see if that is going to look okay. If you're unhappy, now would be the time where you can remove it. You can lift this up and gently peel it back. It's really kind of difficult to remove this once we put the little friend on top. This is good for me because I'm gonna cut this actually into a bang so it's gonna end up being short. Take the other piece of bread. We're gonna take the end of the hair extension and you're just kind of feeling it with your hands. Matching it to the end and when you feel like that's a good fit, you're going to sandwich it in between and press down. Take the smoothing iron and tap, tap, tap. This is going to melt the glue, keratin, whatever you wanna call it. And I like to do this, mush it together because you're getting that glue to stick to the hair. Your hair is the only thing that's really holding these on, so you need your hair to be wrapped around in glue, if that makes sense. I know you may be thinking, well, this is going to damage my hair. A little bit, yeah. But you have to think about what you're doing. You're adding a foreign object to your head. You're essentially just gluing things on little strands of hair. 
So yeah, some of them aren't gonna make it out alive, but some of them are, so just know that. If this is your first time, I would suggest you ping pong to each side. And I guess what I mean by that is do this side, mirror this side, do this side, near this side. That way everything is completely even. I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with this side just so it's easier to see you. Now moving on, we're gonna take this down, take another diagonal line. So it's going to be really right on top of this one. This time I'm gonna use one that we low, whoa, that we low lighted, has a little color in it. Little low lights make it look thicker. So very thin diagonal, flipping this up in with the hair extension, woo. Hang on, what are you doing? In with the hair extension, laying it down. Take a step back, we're happy with the placement, everything looks good from far away, you got this. Adding the other one on the top. Sandwich, pressing it down. Bop, bop, bop. And then marrying it together with your hands. Whoa, that's hot. Marrying it together with your hands. Now I'm gonna go through and do a horizontal placement right in the middle of my ear. Still in the same front quad. Here's my diagonal one right on top of it is going to be a horizontal piece parallel to the floor. So on our little baby here, we've got a horizontal one staying off the hairline. We're slicing off our very thin subsection, put our extension on the bottom, matches our part line or our sectioning, which is horizontal, lifting this little tail up straight downtown, rubbing it. If there's any sticky left when you rub it, that means there's room for more hair. Mine's not sticky, my finger just glides through it, so I'm good. Other piece, sticky side, using my fingers to feel it, marrying it with its friend, in with a smoothing iron. So here's our three pieces in the front. Now we're done with that, so we're gonna go ahead and pin this back. You wanna stay off this crown area as much as possible. Whoops, girlfriend. This part of the head, the very top crown area, because if you go up too far, it's gonna be very obvious that there's hair extensions. You've got a little short and then whoo. In the back, you have a middle part. Whoa, a middle part. <laughs> We're always leaving our hairline out, this part. You're never putting extensions around this zone. Behind the ear to the nape of the neck. No extension zone. My first extension is going to be in the middle at the bottom nape of the neck here. It's a little bit away from the part line and it's away from the hairline. Now for the back of the head, it can vary on how you do it. I'm just keeping in mind for myself how I'm going to wear my hair. When I go to the gym with extensions, I wear mine in little dog ear things, two ponytails, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm being mindful of how I'm going to wear that. I know I'm going to be wearing two ponytails. So I wanna make sure when I part my hair off, I don't have an extension dragging over here where it's visible to everyone else. Not that we would care, but we're trying to hide it. Can you see me? So I'm using this mirror against this mirror. First, let me straighten up my part line, straight down the middle. Pull this really tight. I do not, or taut, whatever you wanna say. I don't want to confuse or get any stragglers over here. Horizontal lines because the back of our neck or nape is horizontal. That looks straight enough. And you can see I've left out a big chunk of my hairline. And again, I'm staying out of this zone and this zone, this zone. I gave that a, like a sassy Z, zone. <laughs> so we're just working in the middle. Horizontal subsection matches our part line. Everything horizontal right now. Hair extension in. Then honestly, you just kind of have to feel in the back and connect the dots with your fingers. Make sure that hairline's out. In a perfect world, it wouldn't be that close to the hairline. Not a big deal because I know that I'm not wearing mine in a ponytail, or so I say. I'm sure I probably will. Oops. And let that glue cool before you start messing with them. I usually don't mess with mine for 24 hours because it's kind of like hot glue. You heat it up, it melts, it's malleable. When it cools, it stays, but you don't want to mess with it while it's in that warm phase. You know what I mean? So we just want to leave these alone. It's tempting to want to like go ahead and start twirling and curling. You have 30 days to do that. You'll be okay. Bring our hair down. We're going to make another horizontal line. This one for me in my head shape, it's going to fall right at the tip of my ear, just like that. 
This one is going to have two. We're gonna have one right here and one right here. Again, we're leaving space here and definitely leaving space here too. Not only will you be able to see that a lot if you don't leave space, think about your hair being up always, but it's going to start irritating you because when it touches your ear after it grows out, it's very annoying. Oh, and I should mention, mention same thing with the back. It would be wise to work side to side. So we just put one here, you should put one here. I'm just doing this so it doesn't take three hours for us to do this on film. Taking a horizontal subsection. Taking a look, is that far away enough from my ear? Sure think so, sure hope so. Sticky side up, horizontal, matches everything. Laying my hair down, feeling. Okay, that feels like there's still some sticky. So when you still have a little bit of sticky, take some hair down from the top and fold it over. Check, okay, that's much better. Hair extension over the top. Piece of bread between the bologna. Here we go to this one. And they're gonna be right next to each other, like they are getting married. They are right there, pretty dang close. Feeling it, sandwiching them. So they are pretty much overlapping. Melting. Here's what we just did. We did right above the ear, one and two. It's brick laid with this. Looks just like bricks. They're staggered, they're not all do 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 do. They're do 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 do. So now we need to place a hair extension right in the middle to be our other brick. Brick laying them is really beneficial to helping it look more natural in the back and avoiding that whoop, disconnect. Oh, I just met my goals doing hair extensions. Praise the Lord. Taking a pretty big subsection here like that playing three blind mice. You just have to feel. Here we go. This is where these two disconnected. So somewhere in here needs to be a hair extension. Hair extension down. And this one, can you see that? I really messed up on the color there. So I'm just gonna put this one in the back. Kind of hide that and I'll forget about it. So not a big deal. Okay, I'm touching it to see if it's sticky. It's not. Sandwiching it in between. Perfect. <laughs> now what we're going to do is work on the corner. This is a pretty crucial part as well. The head starts to curve here and creates a corner. Very important in hair cutting and very important in hair extensions. It creates a buildup of weight that we need to be prepared for. We need to follow the curve. We don't need to keep this going. We need to make sure it's slightly curving if that makes any kind of sense. And it's not anything so dramatic that you honestly are gonna be able to see. Can you see that? Yeah, well, you can kind of see it. It's a little slight Diagonal. That's what's gonna go next because our head is round. It's not boxy and square, or most of us. It's curving. For this, we're gonna be placing one diagonal to account for, okay, I have a round head. This one is going to match our part line, which is diagonal. When we put in the hair is also diagonal. See, not horizontal. Your hand, your mind, everything wants to do horizontal, but you need to always match the line with the line, with the line. Making sure there's no sticky, there's not. Using our eyeballs, matching it, pinching it, heat it up. Just folded that so you could see better. This one should kind of line up with this one. If they're not, that's okay. Especially if it's your first time, you'll get the hang of it. And this does get a lot easier every time you do this. Ignoring the fact that the texture is a little bit different and the color, you can see that there's no gap. Now, another common place to get a gap is here because you've done two different sides. So how to blend that is to take the top and put an extension up here. For me to show you properly, let me go ahead and do this side real quick and then I'll show you the top. I've matched both sides and I forgot to mention the reason they look so frizzy like this is because I let them air dry after we did our low lights and dip tone them. You wanna let these air dry if you can every single time and I'll have like a nice wave, it'll be frizzy, but then you can take the blow dryer and smooth it out with a dryer. But the less heat, the better with these things because it's dead, it's dead hair. Also not to brag, but lower quality. The other side that I did is a mirror image to this. There's an extension here, there's one here, there's one here, here, and this one kind of diagonal or curved. Now where we're gonna get to is where we have a disconnect here because we left space right here. You're gonna be able to see it in the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but when I smooth it out, you'll be able to see an obvious gap here in the middle because we spent all our time and distributed all the weight here 
here, 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 and none in the middle. So now we need to balance this at the top. We're gonna take another horizontal curved line and I'm kind of feeling where the other two were on the sides of my head, like this. And we're breaking that line, so we're gonna add it in the middle. Holding it straight up, hair down. That feels like that was way too much hair that I put down. So just drag the comb across, whatever hair comes up like this, pin it up. You don't wanna overstuff it. Clamp the other one on top. There it is, it's not too far up and it's straight down the middle to hide that gap. And it's kinda hard to tell until we smooth it out, but you can see how it flows all together. I have six pieces left, so this will make three more complete wefts. Two that are colored, four that are not. I'll show you how to blend them, style them, maintenance on them in future videos, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Anytime I install these, I like to leave them alone for at least 24 hours. It's tempting to want to flat iron this and smooth it out and see how it looks, but I prefer to leave them alone. That way they can kind of marinate, settle in my head, have time to cool down. You may need to take an ibuprofen if it's too tight on your head. How I'm going to sleep in these is just a middle part in the back. Tuck it behind my ear and because I place them good, I'm not pooling. I don't ever wanna pull my extensions. That's pulling my real hair and causing it to break and snap. These little rubber bands from the Dollar Tree. And sometimes I use scrunchies, just kinda depends. And I'll make one pony, not too tight. It's just real simple like that. And just twist it one over the other. You can braid it and that's it. This is my look for the next 24 hours. When I do shampoo them, it's with very cold, the coldest it can get water. And I'm doing a light sulfate free shampoo, conditioning the ends very little, towel drying it by squeezing it, detangling it with that Dollar Tree detangling brush and letting it air dry no heat if possible. Now there will be times I will have to blow dry these, I'm sure, but for now, at the very initial beginning, very little touching. So yeah, that's it. There we have it, these long extensions. Long and sassy. As always, thank you for joining me here in my bathroom. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. I'm here for you every Sunday, so I will see you next time for something cool. Something.